Hi there, folks. So for those of you that celebrate, Christmas is soon going to be upon us. 2021 is drawing to a close and it's been a very difficult year for many. It's also been a very interesting year in the financial markets. So this is going to be my last YouTube video of the current year. Um, so today I thought I'd summarise basically what's been happening uh, in the global markets uh, in the past year and maybe look forward to see what we've got in store for next year. So the year kicked off with the inauguration of the new president, President Biden. Now some of you will recall the election uh, back in the previous November. During that election week, the US stock market rose by almost 10%, five straight days of gains. Surely the writing was there on the wall. Trump had told us that the stock market was so high because of his policies. Biden gets elected and we have a 10% rise from those current levels. That must have been the writing on the wall. This year alone, the US stock market is up almost 40%. That's the Dow, the S&P 500, which is the main indices, up massively. So surely this bubble's gonna burst, right? Remember John Maynard Keynes? He's famous for saying, the markets can remain irrational for longer than you can remain solvent. So keep buying, I guess, is the name of the game for that. So what's been causing this big, big stock rally in the uh, global markets? Well, clearly it's down to the fact that there's a huge amount of money being flooded into the markets. Governments around the world, they've been buying up assets, buying all their bonds, buying all the corporate bonds, putting money into the system to help with the aftermath of the global pandemic. So it's not only the stock market that's been rising this year. Look at the dollar. The US dollar has been on a rampage high, up almost 7% this year alone. 7% in the economy that is now as strong as it's ever been, as Powell was saying in the recent FOMC just this week. And with that, they believe now that this easy money that we've been seeing flooding the markets, that is now coming to an end. Powell's already announced that they are going to be heightening up the speed of which they're buying their bonds back. Basically, that means they're going to be reducing the money in the markets. And why are they doing this? Well, they're doing this because of the ugly word inflation. Inflation across the globe has been soaring across all the developed economies, up over 6% in the US, up 5% in the UK, and looks to be on that trajectory higher as well. Now, inflation is generally bad for the economy. It's why the central banks around the world, they're generally mandated to control inflation. Control inflation normally to a reasonable level, about 2%. But now with this high inflation, there's a strong expectation that the markets are gonna to have to see a tightening of money conditions. Tightening of money conditions, tightening of interest rates in the US, well, that's just aiding the US dollar strength as well. If you want to invest in the higher interest rate markets, you need to buy the currency in order to invest in that high interest rate environment. And that's exactly why the US dollar has been so strong this year. Take a look at another asset class that some of you may be in, Bitcoin. Bitcoin, wow, what a year that's had. We saw a rise this year of about 150% at one point. We've also seen a couple of big drawdowns, 50% drawdowns a couple of times. In fact, the recent drawdown is up over 40% at the moment and possibly counting. Some of you may have seen my video last week talking about Bitcoin, how I'm buying the dip on every dip in Bitcoin. Stick that under my pillow for future years. Bitcoin, of course, will be here tomorrow. It will be here next year. Maybe that is something you might want to look at into next year. Certainly something that I'm going to be squirreling away a bit of cash. Okay, so now let's look at a few charts. I'll talk about a couple of my predictions of what can happen next year. Now, please don't trade on the back of these. These are purely my predictions. I don't have any real money on these myself, so there's no reason why you should do either. You need to do your own analysis, follow your trading strategies. But it's interesting to see what's happened last year, uh, or this year, I should say, and what could potentially happen uh, next year. So at the turn of 2021, uh, see my crosshairs up here. We had the euro against the US dollar trading up there at around the 123 level. Now, as I mentioned a moment ago, the dollar has been on a rampage higher 
for pretty much all of this year. This is the most actively traded currency pair on the planet. Many traders only trade the euro against the US dollar. It is, as I say, the most active and has the most volume going through it on a daily basis. I think about 33% of all transactions um, in, the, uh, in the markets um, are on the euro dollar. In fact, the dollar accounts for 88% of all transactions that did, you know. Right, so we had the um, dollar basically getting stronger. Now, when the dollar gets stronger, this currency pair clearly goes lower because uh, it is um, the, uh, the euro that is the base currency and the dollar is the quote currency. So here we've got the, uh, the dollar getting stronger. That basically means the euro is getting weaker. Uh, up till about March time. Then we had a bounce back up again, uh, up to around 22 and a bit. Took, didn't, um, it failed to take out the previous highs. There was a clue there already that once we um, failed to take out the previous yearly highs at the turn of the new year, that this was going to be trading down. This is a daily chart. Um, and I see we had another pullback again, um, back up to previous level of resistance and roll back again. It's having these minor sort of pullbacks along the way, but nothing too spectacular. Uh, that pullback there was about one and a half percent. Again, nothing too, uh, too massive. Uh, it's been a really nice trendy market for you uh, trend followers. Maybe 1.7% uh, pullback there. Uh, in the last uh, couple of weeks, we've had a bit of a pullback again, which has seen a 1.5% pullback. Now, for those of you that follow the fundamentals, certainly this week you'll have seen both these currencies have had their central bank speakers. The Fed yesterday signaled that they will be moving interest rates uh, next year once they've completed their asset purchase wind down. Uh, whereas the ECB, the European Central Bank, they ain't moving rates. They're not moving rates any time uh, soon. And indeed, that would normally be bearish for the euro. And I think that theme for next year will continue. I'm looking at a range of next year of the euro against the US dollar trading uh, in the range of 105 down to 110. I'm just drilling out here to the weekly chart. If you look back to uh, the end of last year, we had this currency pair trading a low down there at 106.40 uh, or something like that. So I wouldn't be surprised to see this currency pair kick the new year with that trend momentum in play. It clear, it's clear to me that the US are more aggressive uh, in their rate hiking cycle uh, than, the, uh, than their European uh, counterparts. So that's the euro dollar uh, lower uh, for 2022. Now, this chart shows you gold, um, XAU, and it's priced against the US dollar. And you see here that the gold market, anyone that's trading gold this year, has most probably struggled. Gold has been in quite a tight range. In fact, it really seems to be contained um, certainly below uh, 119, 1900, about 100 pips from here, um, and hit the low down there at around the, uh, uh, around the 17 level. And at the moment, at the time of recording, we're in the 118 level, 108, uh, 1,800. So you see gold is basically bang smack in the middle, really, of the annual range. But what's interesting to me here is that gold does seem to have performed quite well in light of a strong US dollar. Now, normally, when you have a pair like this, what happens to one side, the opposite happens to the other side. So we know that the US dollar has been pushing up, but actually gold has been pushing up as well. You can see these... Uh, lower highs as we go, which means or shows me that gold still has um, a bid potential. Maybe the path of least resistance for gold is higher. Now, if the US dollar was to flounder or, or falter uh, next year, I would expect to see the gold markets push up and challenge uh, 119 level. I would imagine now that the fact that we are seeing some rate hikes in the US, but it's pretty much uh, priced in, that the US dollar will continue to grind higher, but maybe at a slower pace, which means gold could continue higher uh, into next year. And I wouldn't be surprised to see a re-challenge of um, this year's highs up there at 119. So that's basically my view on gold. Now, this is a chart showing the Australian dollar against the Japanese yen. And the reason why I wanted to pull this one up was basically it is a commodity currency, a high yielding beta currency traded against the safe haven low yielding currency. Now, typically in times of risk on, the high yielding commodity beta currencies, they tend to do better um, and outperform the low yielders um, and the safe haven currencies. And I expect this to be the theme of next year as 
everyone gets back to work as economies uh, wake up. Of course, we've got variants away along the way. We'll always have variants of COVID, in my opinion, and the markets are just going to have to accept it, unfortunately. Um, for those that are badly affected, it is going to be the way of the future. For risk on play, if the stocks push higher, if the economy is continue to um, expand at the pace they are at the moment, you are going to see a demand for these commodities. Australian dollar will outperform. Now, this chart shows you the daily chart. You see, we've touched this level of structural support a couple of times back there in August, again, back in September. It was the high back there at the end of last year, and it obviously was the sort of launch pad, if you like, for the move all the way back up to um, 85, uh, 86 zone at the moment. So I'm expecting uh, this now, this currency pair, to gain back to yearly highs that we saw this year, back up into the 86 area, uh, which is about four or 500 pips from that. So I'm expecting this to trade above this area of support into next year. Of course, I don't, as I say, don't trade this as a strategy. It's just my bias. I'll be looking for entries on lower time frame charts along the way with that theme in mind. Just a quick look here at uh, the yield curve, courtesy of this website. Great little website, this one actually, uh, coifin.com. Uh, it's free as well. You can check it out if you wish. Um, I'm not affiliated in any way at all. So um, so this is the uh, the yield curve, the bond yields. New Zealand dollar, you'll see the colour code up there. has a bond yield of 2.3. Aussies up there, 1.57. Uh, you've got the US dollar up there at the moment at 1.4 and a half. And Canadian dollar pound uh, having a bit of a leg up today as we moved interest rates in the UK today at the time of recording. Look at these low yielding currencies, Japanese yen. You've got the Swiss franc and you've got the German uh, you've got the German Bund down there as well, basically a benchmark for Eurozone. So these currencies are the low yielders. These are the ones that could underperform next year, and these are the ones that could perform um, better. So basically looking at currency markets on the back of the just the yield differentials uh, makes a good play for the Aussie, dollar, Aussie yen uh, to trade higher. Okay, lastly, let's have a look at the, uh, the stock market. So this is the S&P 500, top 500 companies. Uh, in the US, we'll put into an index. As I say, it's the main benchmark. Often we look at the uh, the Dow as well, which is the top 30 uh, companies. But uh, both move pretty much in sync with each other. And you can see really pretty much all of this year, which is for about here at the beginning, we've had uh, just upward momentum all the way. We've had pullbacks along the way. For me, for my funds, I've been buying into pullbacks as well. That pullback was a little bit nervous. You remember this pullback? This is when Deutsche Bank, came out and said they expect the market to drop 10% by the end of the year. I mentioned it in a YouTube video. I love it when we have analysis like this. I think they did a survey of the top 500 uh, banks and analysts, and uh, I think 70% were saying the stocks are going to drop by about 10%. Drop by about 5%. A couple of weeks later, we're making all-time highs again. And this little drop here was when the uh, markets basically took a bit of a breather from all-time highs. But these little drops you're seeing at the moment, you know, 4% drops, 5% drops. It happens all the time. It's nothing to be get alarmed about. Um, and you know, the, the higher highs that we're making along the way just gives me one story, basically, and that's buy the dips in the stock markets. As Jen Maynard Keynes said, markets can remain remain irrational longer than you can remain uh, solvent. So at the time of writing, or at the time of recording, now, in fact, today we have hit all-time highs again in the stock market. Let's put this into perspective. Stock markets hitting all-time highs the day after the Fed basically announced they're going to be raising interest rates and next year. An aggressive Fed and the stocks are still pushing higher. Of course, he mentioned the economy and so forth. I don't see any reason, really, why uh, you don't want to be uh, thinking longer term that the stocks will continue higher. But don't take my word for it. Sure, you've all heard of BlackRock, the big investment fund house. Well, they just announced that they think 2022 will be a year for the stock market. Uh, it remains to be seen. But at the end of the day, it does appear that the economies are opening up despite the Omicron variant. Powell mentioned, as I said, that uh, you know the economy has never been so strong. We're nearing on maximum employment uh, month on month in. We're seeing a big, big move, uh, move higher. Um, in those numbers back to employment, which is all good for the economy and so forth. So 2022, it's certainly going to be an exciting year uh, in the markets. Let's hopefully we all stay safe. So if you are day trading and you're failing to make money, make 2022 a year of change. Do something different. Get yourself educated on how to day trade the markets. 
have a methodology, have a trading plan. It's exactly what we try to teach and install in our members inside our trading room. Don't trade alone. Come and join us here at ForexSignals.com. We'll show you the right way to do it. So on that note, I'd like to thank you all for following me over the last year here on the channel. It's been an absolute pleasure. Love reading all your comments as well. On that note, don't forget to leave a comment. Let me know how your year has gone and how you've changed uh, your trading. Don't forget you can subscribe to the channel if you don't already do so. And that bell notification, well, that will notify you when I release the next video, uh, which will be next Monday, of course. Then it will be in the new year. The Monday forecast will be out as per usual. And think about it, 2022, make that year a year of change. Come over to Forex Signals. Take out that seven-day free trial. See what it's all about. Get your teeth into all our education and plan for your future for you and your family. I'll see you in the new year. Have a wonderful time and stay safe.